Uh, but what I'm going to talk today about is the Sheets Head Way and West Cork because I'm very passionate about those things. But I was very conscious that I wanted you to be able to go away with something you could think about in relation to your own destination. So what I want to think about today with you is the idea that when we are small businesses developing individual products, we benefit from thinking about the big picture, the whole destination. That thinking about the big picture when you're planning your small business product is something that gives you a commercial advantage. Where am I going to that? No, is it not? I think you just have the pointer actually. So. Oh, that's the pointer. That's the one. Ah, that's it. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> One of the things that we do when we're establishing a new product of any kind outside tourism is that we think about what we've got to put our product together. So we think, right, these are the skills I've got, right, these are the assets I've got, and these are the logistics I'll have to kind of take into account when I'm setting up my driving school, when I'm setting up my surfing business, when, when I'm kind of trying to put my product together for any market. So any time you put a product together, you think about what your skills are, what practical problems you'll face, what profit margins you're going to make, who your customers are going to be, and what the competition is. And very often, if I don't just do marketing with tourism businesses, I get people come to see me and they say, we need to go out and market it now. And they're nearly locked inside their business plan and locked inside their houses, locked inside the idea of this business and keeping competition away and keeping it unique. And my argument would be that that's fine to a certain point when you're developing non-tourism businesses because you are <coughs> in competition in a very real way with everybody else because you are in a tourism business in a different way. In a tourism business, if you start developing in that keep away from everybody else, keep it to ourselves, keep it exclusive kind of way, you end up with a tourism product which may well be very good, but is a bit monumental, like one of the tower house castles we have in West Cork, this caravan house castle, about four minutes down the road from me. Okay? You create your business, you defend it, you reinforce it, okay? And, and that's great, you make something very, very solid, very impressive, uh, but it can tend to repel people a bit, okay? Um, it can be tricky for the tourist to engage with that kind of business and approach it, especially when you're one of 50 businesses like that within a 20 mile radius and you're all doing your own thing and you're all being very defensive and all of a sudden you have loads and loads of these tower houses all across your destination and they're all being prickly and they're all keeping each other out and, well, that can be a bit confusing for the tourist. Here are some really great food businesses along the Sheep's Head Way, okay, which is an 80 kilometre walking route along the edge of the Sheep's Head Peninsula, part of a 200 kilometre range of trails. Great place to go, great place to walk, makes you hungry all that walking. So you might want to go and visit Alan and uh, Barry up in Glenillan Farm, there's lots of cows in these presentations, aren't there? Um, uh, and See how they built a, a yoga business that sells in UK Tesco's now, but started off with Big Pan that they had a row about buying and a stall at Bantry Market. Go and see them. Go into Bantry and have lunch with Rachel and Hannah, who are sisters of Organico. Go for a walk on the sheep's head. Eat one of Bernie's scones at Cop on Tea. I can't because I'm celiac, so you'll have to come eat for me. Mm -hmm. uh, call into the White House Gallery on the way back to see the art of the coffee shop and gallery there, and maybe go and have uh, dinner at the fish kitchen in Bantry after calling to Bantry House in the afternoon. The problem is that when those businesses talk about themselves or were talking about themselves, they were just talking about this is what's on my menu, this is what I'm doing for dinner, this is where I am, this is what my opening hours are. And the fact that there's a two day itinerary in there and a really great excuse to do all of that by going to Mar Murphy's and Bandry afterwards for a, a wee drop. Um, that wasn't emerging, it was quite difficult for the tourists to spot. Okay? So, we set up a tourism co-op a couple of years ago, uh, two years ago, and it's the Sheep's Head and Bandry Tourism Cooperative. The tourists encounter it as this idea of living the Sheep's Head way. Come here, live the Sheep's Head way, and find great food. Look, here's a list of all the great food providers. Here's the cafes, here's the B&Bs, here's the celiac friendly ones, here's the accessible ones, right? Here are the heritage trails, here are the walks, here are the loop walks, here are the heritage walks. So we stranded it out for them. 
In doing that work of bringing everybody together under this umbrella of this marketing campaign, we were building on the area's substantial work on responsible tourism over 20 odd years. In the late 1990s, over 100 farmers came together and founded the Sheep's Head Way walking route. There is no right to roam in Ireland. They agreed between them a long process to make a right of way for people to walk along the entire coast of the Sheep's Head Peninsula. Since then, cooperatives like the Sheep's Head Producers Market, which brings foodies and crafters together, have used the same principle of collaboration, that kind of barrier lowering and discussion to create things that tourists love. The Sheep's Head Way is one of the most popular walking routes in Europe. The Sheep's Head producers have gained a huge amount by working together. And this campaign pulls up the foodies, the walks, everything together and presents them to tourists in a collective way. There's a long tradition of thinking collaboratively on the Sheep's Head. The thing is, tourists want connections. The person who's sitting there thinking, I've got a new idea for a tourist business, I must keep it here on my piece of paper, I must try and develop it by myself, can sometimes forget that what tourists want is connections. This quote, uh, I'll read it first. I was stuck trying to write an itinerary for a journalist, so I put up on our Facebook page, what would you do if you had an ill machine's head? And somebody wrote, I tried a bit of Duras cheese, walking, <coughs> sampling some of the delicious things from the sheep's head producers market, visit one or two of those pubs with amazing views, Arundel's by the pier, the tin pub. Uh, and if I have enough time, I'll pop to the beach. That would be on the Mizzen Peninsula. Not sure if we can. Certain members of the co op would <laughs> allow her off. <laughs> but, um, actually, I may need a little more time to fit it all in. This person is a South African woman living in Devizes who has never been to Cork. She has followed our social media, though, for a year. And she <coughs> has a view of what living the sheep's head way is, that is doing this and that, both this and that, using that business and the next one. She actually has picked up really nicely on what our ethos is, enjoying the place, tasting cheese that is made from milk grown on the pastures by Demands Bay. She's really hooked into what we like about living there ourselves. Lots of sheep's head people would pick that for a day out and be delighted with it. One of the ways that we have made it easier for her to do all of that when she gets here is we've made these little brochures. Um, I thought we brought one up, but I've been somewhere else now. Uh, the Eating the Sheep's Head Way Local Food Guide. Markets, um, um, producers, cookery schools, learn to cook seaweed, all of this stuff is in there. Pulling it together, gaining collective advantage. What we've done is pull it all together and create this brand, Living the Sheep's Head Way. Now, it's good for visitors. It's saying, come here, explore, connect with the way of life that we love. But why it's also important is it represents a challenge to the members of our tourism co-op, a challenge to deliver on the promise we've made to visitors. We're asking businesses to create products and create experiences that help people connect, that let people discover that allow them to live the sheep's head way. And some of our marketing work is outputs, but we also work a lot with local businesses, say, trying to help them create experiences that will provide really interesting, deep, <coughs> rich experiences for visitors. Ones that will let in lengthen people's stay and encourage them to spend more, creating more value uh, for us as tourism providers. So, a cooperatively managed destination gives you a sense of shared purpose, <coughs> a kind of narrative structure, you've got a set of themes and <coughs> ideas to organise yourselves around, and a rigorous uh, framework for meaningful development and misconduct. So, I'm just going to run through some experiences now. But we discuss in groups, food groups, craft groups, some experiences ideas, uh, opportunities that we might have. We work together, we say, right, you send them here, I send them there, we, we kind of develop packages. We develop experiences that contribute to telling the destination story, that aren't just about uh, an individual day out. 
We try and make connections between foodies and producers uh, kind of visible. And we try and make the experiences as immersive as, as possible. So I'm just going to run through four very quickly uh, experiences you can have on the sheep side. Manning's Emporium is a great cafe working, selling local food. As of this year, Anya Brosnan is here, one of the tour guides. They're giving foodie tours that will take you to the farmyards of the people who are making the cheese. In to meet Jeff Gill at Doris Cheese, into the farmyards where the Dexter cattle are, are there, getting you talking to the producers, out to the monuments in your wellies, meeting people, connecting the, with the land, the environment, and so on. You can see here, West Cork is, is a living, breathing foodie culture. You know, you're going to see what the tourist doesn't see. You'll see what we see and what we love. Carberry Sailing, again, Chris Walker is here, who runs Carberry Sailing. Carberry Sailing offers wild Atlantic Way cruises. That, sh that It's a product, this one, that comes out of the story. This is a product that's all about getting you on a sailing boat, very low carbon footprint, out onto Dunmanus Bay with the dolphin swimming beside you, eating Duras cheese and locally grown salads for your lunch while you're out, hearing the stories about Carberry's Isles, out to Bear Island so that you learn about its long links with the British Navy, to the Sheriff's <coughs> Nature Reserve on the islands. This isn't just a story that's about the sheep's headway, it connects you to the rich and varied coastline and communities of the whole of West Cork and, and its seven inhabited islands. When you come back from eating your Doris cheese, seeing the dolphins and visiting Bear Island, you can go into Arundel's and you know, it's one of the best spots to sit and, and have a great meal afterwards. There are loads of individual businesses involved in delivery on that product. It tells a great story about our place and the quality of what we have to offer. The old creamery building in Kilprahan um, is a sign, like all those old creamery buildings, of a cooperative movement that made, was hugely important in Ireland's economy in the 20th century. In the last two years, the old creamery has been revived in Kilprahan by a business that has a great flourishing restaurant there, but also has made room to give the Sheep's Head producers their first shop, a place where you can go in, buy local jams. The number of times you see on Twitter, I just bought some eggs, and it tells me the names of the hens who laid the eggs, you know? It's just, it, it's a place where you can hire a bike. Activity providers like Chris from Atlantic Sailing, uh, like Harry Sailing, go in and can run courses in another of the rooms there. You can hire bikes, you can do walking trails. If they've turned a building which had a cooperative, Kind of structure into something that is doing that again now and delivers on food, activity, and the whole ethos of what we're trying to do on the sheets anyway. So working together in a tourism co-op allows bigger thinking. Thinking beyond me, my idea, my skills, my profit. And into something that <coughs> helps you think bigger, tell a bigger story. One that brings profit to your neighbours, that encourages your neighbours to cross-promote. Um, a tourism co-op is better resourced and networked. Gives, it gives a great way of new businesses launching in and getting connected. We've got a new uh, a business called Shoe University operating out of Bantry House. You can go and learn to make shoes at Bantry House and make your own pair of slippers, which gives a whole new meaning to walking the sheep's head way. But that business came to us from Carlo, no offence to Carlo, but when they joined our tourism co-op, they all of a sudden 100 businesses knew about it and were promoting them, right? So they couldn't believe how networked they were and how quickly and how many strands of a story they could start to begin to. So this is all about delivering high quality experiences that help to tell a story, a story that we tell through social media in various different ways. The story, the quality of the story helps us to generate longer, better, more profitable, more powerful visits. The accommodation provides you very quickly. <coughs> Top of the Rock Pop Farm was built because a walking survey in West Cork identified the need for year round varied accommodation. Pop Park, that's linked to St Finbar's Way, a revived Bill Pilgrim Trail through West Cork. Um, but also, gets, when you're there, you get a breakfast bag, and the breakfast bag has in it yogurts from Glen Ellen Farm down the road. Go on more. <coughs> B and B that run, is hooked into running uh, stone carving weekends for the local sculptor. 
they spoke to me the other day and they said, do you know what, we're actually thinking of stopping letting rooms for one night. We, you, there is enough going on that we, it's a pain for us anyway to do that. We'd like to be promoting the area better and using that to make two night space more uh, the, the, the basis of our business. Great places have great stories in them. Strong stories focus on powerful experiences. Go to your business and say, come on, give me the powerful experiences to tell our story. Powerful experiences create meaningful connections for tourists, for us with tourists. Meaningful connections lead people go home and say, I went to a great place. You should go there too. We make tourism better when we look up and take in the view. When we're making a new tourism product, we shouldn't be insular, we shouldn't be inside our tower house, we should be looking around us and being connected. Okay? And you know, we've done all of this, I should say, with the support of West Park Development Partnership and uh, Cockpit Council too. So a bit of money can help us also. <laughs> <laughs>